I'm Pat Perdue, sitting in for Maggie John, and we're joined by Devel Morrison from Bosley Real Estate Limited. Devel, welcome back. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me again. Awesome. And as I mentioned, because I'm kind of just meeting you for the first time, even though I listen to you every week, this is kind yeah. of a great opportunity to find out a little bit more about who Devel Morrison is and the kind of things that you focus on in your business. Can we talk about that for a bit? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Go for it. Uh, amazing. Thank you for that. So first of all, you know, we were, we were talking a little bit about podcasts. I mentioned that I'm a podcaster. You have a podcast, uh, the Morrison Report podcast. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's really, it's consumer oriented. There's a lot of real estate podcasts out there and they are geared towards other real estate agents or okay. real estate professionals. So I wanted to have something that is geared towards consumers to answer questions and shed the light on a lot of different topics. Now, at the current moment, I'm having, I guess, a bit of a, a brain drain and that I'm thinking, what else can I talk about? Oh, what I know are people what that's like. Interested in? Pod fade, a pod fade. I've been there. Yeah. And so I'm always trying to come up with ideas about who to interview next. So I'm I'm in that phase right now where I'm like, oh my God, who do I need to interview next? What else can I do? <laughs> and and what's the talk? Like you're, you know, you have your pulse on on what's happening. Like you're selling properties here in Toronto. And I noticed that you just posted that you did some you you sold a property in the Davisville area. And yeah. that's amazing. Congratulations on that. Um so what's the buzz? Like we hear in the headlines of, I guess, the clickbaity stuff that that we talked about earlier. What are you hearing on the ground level? Well, you know, it's really interesting. So yes, I had a condo listing recently at 245 Davisville. I saw that. That's, that's yeah. a sweet condo. Yeah, Davisville and Mount Pleasant. And it was a two bedroom, two bathroom condo, parking locker. We listed it for $799,000. We had almost 30 showings. And we had six offers and it sold for $980,000. Nice, nice. So, I mean, our clients are over the moon and super happy. And, you know, this particular condo, this particular style of condo or or, or um, floor plan mm -hmm. hasn't really been on the market in that building in many, many years. Partly because the people that live in that building like it so much, they don't want to leave. Sure, sure. Um, so it was interesting how many people loved that particular layout because they said this is just so unique. You know, it's got a big terrace, which people are really excited about outdoor space. Oh, for sure. In a condo and it faced northeast. So the north portion of it, although a lot of buyers are obsessed with facing south, in this particular building, most people obsessed with facing north because then you're across from a park. So nice. you know that condo building is ever going to go up in front of you. Mm -hmm. And that's the fear, so, right? Like you never yeah. know, you might have a great view for a couple of years and then boof, it's gone. Construction well, for 10 yeah. more years. Right. You almost have to think of, we live in New York City now. So a great view is not guaranteed unless you're fully on the water. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I'm out with buyers showing clients properties, you know, I'm, I'm looking across the road to, to say to them, just to warn them, Hey, that parking lot down there, it's probably going to be a condo one day. So <laughs> I just need you to prepare yourself that yeah. what you're buying is not always going to look like this. So it, it's also about, you know, cautioning clients about what might be so that they can keep their expectations in check. So they're not upset when a condo building does go up in a few years. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And I hear, you know, in your language, you're talking about how you relate with your clients. If folks are considering making a change, you know, downsizing or, or making a purchase or selling something, and they're considering options for real estate agents, what are some things that they should look for? Well, they should look for experience. You know, they should look to make sure that the agent has actually been in the business for a number of years, and they need to make sure that that agent actually does deals on a regular basis. Right. So there are about 90,000 registered agents in Ontario. Whoa. And how, but how many of those registered agents? It's almost like, you know, it's, there's the, there's the new social media platform threads, which yeah. every, everybody's like a hundred million people signed up for it in like 20 minutes. But, yep. but how many people have, have sent more than one or two threads? Like almost none. Feels like that's almost the same deal with those, the licenses of real estate agents in Ontario. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you're looking at maybe about 50% of those, you know, 90,000 agents that I mentioned have actually not done a deal in the year. Wow. 
And so then you're looking at the next crop and I, I can't remember the exact stats. I've only done one deal. So you know, <laughs> it's like Twitter. You, <laughs> yeah. The kind of agent that you should be looking for is someone who's most likely done at least, I don't know, at least over eight deals in a, in a given year. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because that way they have experience and, you know, it's one of those things. A lot of people are upset with the, the fees, the commissions that, um, agents make, but the reality is, is that you, you need to think of that commission as their salary of and course. you know that, that, that might be the salary that they get for the next month or two. It's not a, a mon amount of money that they're getting every single day. Right. And, so, and, so, and I'm guessing you don't want a real estate agent if it's their side hustle, right? Right. Exactly. That's, I was going to get to that. So, you know, when you're interviewing your agent, you need to make sure that this is their full-time job. Yep. They don't do anything else, but sell real estate um, because you want someone who's going to provide you with advice. You know, I was recently meeting with a new client and they said to me, okay, well, this is what we were kind of thinking we want to do. We want to stay as renters, but we want to buy an investment condo to rent it out. And we want it to cash flow positive mm -hmm. as in, you know, after their mortgage and their maintenance fees and their property taxes were taken in con into consideration with the rent that they'd be getting, they want to be able to cash flow so that they're making at least a hundred or two hundred dollars extra on top of that. And so I had to say to this person, so that's not realistic. You're not going to cash flow positive in this day and age, given the high prices. Mm -hmm. And so what I suggested to him instead was I said, you know, listen, when I started out, I also wanted to be a real estate investor. And, you know, one of the things that I did to start out was I decided I needed to buy a house that had income within the house. So I have a house, I have a basement apartment in my house because that extra money that you're making each month, you have a place to stay, but now you have a mortgage helper. Right. And so a lot of people, you know, that's how you make home ownership more affordable. You buy a home that's got some income potential. So that way there's a tenant in there to help pay your mortgage. When I look to markets like Vancouver, because Vancouver is more expensive than Toronto, what people in Vancouver do is they have mortgage, the mortgage helper, which is the basement apartment. I love that and phrase, they, mortgage helper. That's such a great way to put that. Yeah. And they don't look down on it. You know, it's interesting how many people I meet with, you know, in Toronto who are like, oh no, I don't want to have somebody else living with me. Mm. Like it's something wrong with that, you know? Right. Um, right. And, and so I'm like, wow, you're a little snobby on this. Factor. I mean, <laughs> and you know, what's right with that. It's the help on your mortgage that you're going to get from that person. Right. And, and especially in the environment today where rates are so high, you know what? I'm grateful for the mortgage helper. I'm grateful to the tenants for sure. And, but you also, as a landlord, you also need to make sure that you treat the tenants nicely, right? Yep. So we have lots of landlord tenant stories and I, I am a real estate investor as well. So, you know, when someone moves into one of my places, I'm giving them a bottle of Prosecco and a welcome card. Nice. Good for you. Because this is now their home. Mm. At Christmas time, I'm either giving them chocolates or cookies or something. Again, I want to have a good relationship with the person that I'm renting to. And so, you know, we also need to get away from being combative with each other, right? Yep. Yep. That's such good advice. And Devel, I listen to you every week on this show. <laughs> and I also listen to your podcast, the Morrison, uh, the Morrison Report podcast. It's a great podcast, by the way. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, that's, re that's really nice of you. Yeah, for sure. So I'm so glad to talk with you in person. So we've got some real estate news. I'd love your insights. So the first one that I'm looking at is about Canada's inflation rate. We ought, we're always hearing about this in the news and things are so expensive. Apparently it falls to 2.8% or it fell to 2.8%. Yeah. But the long, what I'm seeing is there's a long road ahead to price stability. I guess my question for you, from your perspective as a real estate professional, how does that impact real estate investment decisions? Well, I mean, the inflation rate is affecting what the Bank of Canada is doing in terms of interest rates. So interest rates are, um, you know, obviously a huge issue right now for everybody, mm. whether you're a homeowner, whether you're trying to get into the market, whether you're an investor, especially for those people who are on a variable rate mortgage or people who are looking to renew their mortgage. So, you know, the inflation rate, it's almost like we've become obsessed with it. Yeah, right. Unfortunately, because the Bank of Canada is so obsessed with it. You know, I think what's troubling is when you 
start listening to some of the economists like a, a Benjamin Tal mm -hmm. starts talking about the basket of goods that they use to determine the inflation rate. You know, in, obviously, you know, there's gas in there, there's grocery prices in there. But one of the things that they use to determine the rate of inflation is mortgage payments. Okay. And mortgage payments have been going up the same way that grocery prices and everything else has been going up. Right. When mortgage payments go up, it's actually not inflationary. It's deflationary. And so if you take mortgage payments out of the basket of goods that you look at to determine inflation, it's far lower than that 2.8%. And so then you start to say to yourself, well, why is the Bank of Canada holding steady on this rate when, when this inflation rate, when part of the items that go to determine inflation are actually deflationary? Um, huh. So I think that, that that's sort of the question for me and I think for a lot of people because people are tired of these increased rates. People want them to go down. You know, people are in pain over this, right? You know, totally. people are you know, facing, you know, extra payments, um, their, their budgeting is out of whack. Um, they're stressed out about money. They're stressed out about what happens when they need to renew. So, yeah, I think to me, that's the question is why is the Bank of Canada so beholden to this rate when part of their basket of goods that determines the rate is deflationary? Right. And when you say deflationary, can you explain a little bit about what you mean by that? Sure. So, you know, something like grocery prices, anything where the, the, the prices are going up, mm -hmm. that's inflationary. So it's causing inflation to go up. But technically, when people are paying more on their mortgage payments, that's not really causing things to go up. That's actually causing things to go down because it means they actually have less money to spend on everything else. Huh. So that's why I mean by deflationary, inflationary, they're, you know, they don't want it so that everybody's spending money, that the uh, prices of everything is going up and up and up and up. But when the price of mortgage payments goes up, it's technically going down in a, in a sense. Wow. What a really neat insight. And do you find, and I fully agree with you, it's, we hear about inflation all the time. From your perspective, are we just too focused on that? Well, I mean, I think we're focused on it because the Bank of Canada is focused yep. on it. I don't think anybody wants to be focused on it. <laughs> I certainly but don't. I think, it's, I think it's because the Bank of Canada is so obsessed with it. And that's the, the reason, the rationale that they're using for increasing rates. So we all have to become obsessed with it because we're all affected by these rate increases, whether you're a homeowner or a renter. Yep. It's affecting you in some way. Yep. Got it. Got it. Thank you for that. And I'm glancing at, at another item here. Advisors and brokers are urging clients to plan for more mortgage renewal payment shock. How is this, how are you advising your clients who are worried about that? You must hear about that in your practice all the time. You know, it's interesting. I mean, I haven't had a lot of people ask me specifically about that, okay. but, you know, we've been speaking a lot on the media about something like that. Yeah. So, you know, I think for a lot of people, it's about they need to start, you know, spending less now and they need to start budgeting now so that they can, you know, mitigate that shock of when their payments do increase at such time when they have to do a mortgage renewal mm -hmm. that, you know, it's not going to be too painful for them and they actually have extra money. Um, some of the things people can do now is if they do have extra money, they can actually start paying that down on their mortgage. So, you know, right now someone's got a mortgage payment and right now a good chunk of that mortgage payment is going towards interest versus the principal. Okay. What you could do is top up. What you could do is give your bank an additional $50, $100 a month, whatever it is, whatever you've got. And then that money is actually going to go towards the principal. And so that's going to help you in the long run, because in the long run, when you need to renegotiate your mortgage, because your mortgage has come up for renewal, then that way your equity is going to just start getting lower and lower and lower. So that maybe at such time when you're doing the renewal, and who knows what the rates are going to be next year or two years from now. So I also think it's a bit premature to stress people out over what their mortgage payments are going to look like two years from now, because we have no idea what the rate's going to be two years from now. Yep. But if you have more equity in your property, when you do go to renew, perhaps now you're going back to the bank saying, you know what, I'm going to kick my amortization up to 25 years or 30 years to get my mortgage payments down to a place where I feel comfortable. Got it. Great advice. Pay it off now or pay it down now while yes. you can and while it's less expensive to do so. 
Right. That's great. And uh, I'm looking at another item here about luxury home sales. They're dropping in Toronto with units of $4 million plus is sliding. Share some light on that. And I know you're very active. I've seen your website and I've seen your your Instagram profile. You're doing business. So when you see a headline like that, what does that, how does that resonate with your experience? Well, I think that that headline can actually be a little bit shocking. And I think sometimes we have to remember with the media that the adage is, if it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, yeah. Right. And so I think we always have to remember that because when I started to delve a little bit deeper into this, you know, a decrease in luxury sales is not shocking. The reality is, is that there's a far less supply on the entire overall market than there was last year, okay. whether you're luxury or non-luxury. Um, but we also do have to keep in mind that the luxury market is so small that we're talking about really, like from a statistical point of view, we're talking about really small numbers. So for example, right. if you're looking at the number of you know properties that sold for over $10 million, you know, last year at this time, it was seven. This year at this time is five. So how do you create a headline <laughs> based on I, Go ahead. I, I, I'm, I'm laughing because it's such a ridiculous statistic. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the sample size is too small. The margin for error is huge. And so that's why I had to say that if it bleeds, it leads. It yep. Is this a true headline? It's but, pre- Go ahead. But, is it, but, you know, you do have higher interest rates. You've got the double land transfer tax. And all of those things are disincentives to move. And they always have been. Yep. Yep. Really, really good point. And I, that's why I wanted to know your perspective on it. Because, you know, I look at that headline. It's a little bit of a clickbaity headline. And I needed yeah. to hear it from from the pro. So thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. A little bit of a reality check. And let's take a quick break and we will return with more with Develop Morrison. You're listening to Toronto This Weekend on 640 Toronto.